Two tests will take place today. The first is ballistic testing using various ammunition and caliber. The second is a test with MIT body armor. It'll be tested for stab, cut, slash, and spike protection. My name is Michael Graham. I'm a former city council member and mayor of Washington's safest and smartest cities. With me today who will be shooting is Rocky Cheneau. He has 15 years experience working all over the world in security and ballistics. He has served two terms in the United States Marine Corps and he will be both shooting and providing expert commentary today. In between each round of calibers, we will actually walk up and approach the body armor and Rocky will provide his assessment and interpretation of what the effect of the shooting was. All right, well, I dropped one out, so this one doesn't count. This is just through the board, proves that the board's real. Uh, this round here, center mass, you can see the round's still stuck in the vest, probably about the fifth layer. It hasn't penetrated at all. I can actually show you that. And you can see it stopped right here. So the round's right there. The round is right here. These marks here are actually from where we previously shot this vest. This vest has been shot before. Unlike the competitor vest, that competitor's vest never been shot on before. Now if you want to cover around the back side of the board so you got continuity here, you can actually see, here's my through and through from where I uh, missed, and here's the rest of the board. You can see where that round didn't even cause any, any fractures or breaking in the back of the board. As I said earlier, when you shoot, this board is designed to break from an impact that's sufficient to cause bodily injury. So unlike that board over there, this is still intact. This board would normally break or fracture at the point where you would receive an injury from blunt force trauma from around hitting your vest. So even though the, this vest stopped the round, if the round had hit you with sufficient impact to have caused broken rib, it would have broken the back of the board. Okay, both rounds perforated this vest, so this vest is a fail. Now if you come around to the back, you can see what really happened to this vest. This is what both rounds penetrated through the back of the board. You'll notice with the mid-gel vest, neither, well, the round did not penetrate the vest or penetrate through the board. We're still firing from 16 feet, which is NIJ and FBI protocol, and you've got nothing. Nothing's come through, nothing's impacted, nothing's fractured. That means the wearer of this vest just took two hits from a 40 cal, and they probably got a small bruise. They're not, no broken ribs. And you can come around this side, you can see where the rounds landed. We'll put one through here, and the other one, center of mass, right next to the other one. If there was a chance of that round going through, this is probably its best bet. Tell us what happened here. What do you see? Well, you've got the two rounds that were fired from the front. They're trapped in the in the uh, fiber in the front. They have not made it even as far back as the gel because they're both right here. Uh, this vest had been used in other testing before. We'd fired on it five times previously. 
but those rounds are here. And the, the thing, probably most important thing to point out about those particular rounds is the fact that by placing them both side by side here, that was probably the best chance that 40 cal had of ever getting through this vest. It's incredible. As we can see, for the first round went through, the second round was sucked through the backboard. Uh, you'll get a shot here momentarily of what happened. The vest actually captured that second round. Uh, it, did it, it did so very much like a catcher's mitt by just completely pull, sucking the whole thing in and taking the vest into the body cavity about three inches. That would be some serious bodily trauma. Come on around and take a look. The material pulled through after blowing out the chest cavity basically. Uh, and you've got some major broken ribs if you're wearing one of these vests, but at least the bullet was stopped. So far, that round is sitting right there. This round, I believe, is right there. So this board represents the impact to the human body. It represents the impact to the human body. Now what you'll find is that the initial two shots that were fired did absolutely no damage to the board. It took a contact shot to actually cause enough impact to actually damage a human being. Uh, not hurt anybody seriously, but I would say that would be equivalent to a broken rib. Unlike what we might have over here on the other side, which we'll take a look at here in a moment. But that is a wound, a wound that I would take and get it walk away from. And what was your range when you were taking that contact shot? That contact shot, I pressed the muzzle up against the vest. So that's, that's a law enforcement officer's worst nightmare is getting into a wrestling match with a perp who's got a firearm or gets a hold of their firearm and the weapon goes off up against their vest. That's the last thing they want to have happen. As you can see, once again, no marks where the rounds landed. They're all trapped. So there would be some bodily damage from the impact, but no yep. penetration. But no penetration. This is, this is a, a wound you get up and walk away from. Okay, let's check the industry standard. So Rocky, give us your observations of this one. Well, so I got to cover the vest. It actually stopped the round, but it did so by sucking it through a hole that big and pulling it in about four inches. This would be a fatal the vest had survived, but this would be a fatal one. I don't think anybody would survive a hit. It compressed the body four inches. But there's a, the there's a round. And this is our second vest for this testing. This is our second vest for testing. And what was your range for this contact shot? Uh, it was just touching the skin. Not enough for a powder burn, but just touching the, the cover. Let's go. All right, Rocky. So we shot a 44 Magnum at NIJ distance. 
And then you did a full contact shot. Yep, did a full contact shot. Contact shot made a nice mess, but nothing's still penetrated. Well, now we've suffered some injuries, but we're still we're still alive. And you'll notice there's no penetration anywhere in here. A shot from 16 feet and a contact shot. And a contact range. shot with a 44 Magnum. 240 grains of uh, soft point lead moving at about, oh, what, about 1,300 feet per second, thereabouts? Yeah. And no penetration and of the no gel. no penetration of the gel. This had, uh, what, two shots? Oh, goodness. From a 44 Magnum, I think it managed to capture both rounds, I think. But I'd hate to be the guy wearing this. That's all the way to the spine, at least. <laughs> it's wow. not worse. I mean, I'm only this thick. Yeah. And there's a lot of me. You put that through, that's, a, that's going through a human being. That's just pulling the vest through you and out the other side. Let's see if we can find a round in here. I think it caught the round. So it did not puncture. It did not mm -hmm. penetrate the vest, but the vest is toast. This vest is done. It's it's but then the vest is supposed to fail after. Where's the round? There she is. Made it most of the way. Oh. So once again, this vest is terminated. This vest is terminated. Don't you have that? We've got uh, one last test to do, and that's the 12 gauge shotgun. And uh, I got some interesting comments about this vest. Well, so far, rounds have all been captured. You can actually feel the round in there. Did pull some of it through the board. Unfortunately, we had so many holes in the boards that they were beginning to fail. Did it penetrate the gel? Don't believe so. I'm usually adamant that it didn't. But we will have to... Right there. Yep, there's a wad. Here's the other shell with, with the wadding still attached. There he goes. There. Here you go. She went in about... Well, it stopped penetrating after one, two... Well, there you go. Stop penetrating after two layers. You can actually see where the round came to rest. And it's actually only penetrated a layer and a half because it's actually still there. And we didn't do a thing to the to the gel. Not a thing. We left a nice dent here and a nice bruise right there. Other than that. She's good, and this, this will actually self-heal. Self Reasonably impressive, eh? <laughs> so, this one here. There it is. So, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, nine layers. And there's 40.
Now we work to the other guy. We had to actually go back to the uh, the previous vest because <laughs> the other vest didn't hold up as well. Thank you. Unfortunately, the board wasn't much help either. The round sucked through, punched out the other side. And uh, the other round looks like it went right through. Yeah, oh, right there. Yep, and the second round went through. So I had to aim for this side of the board to try and have some wood to hit. And it's done. Thank you all for witnessing this test today. The results clearly show which body armor we all should be using. We want to thank our host today, Sean Wade of the Black Sheep Training Group. He's representing the Renton Fish and Game Range. We appreciate you sponsoring and hosting this test today. We also want to thank More Innovative Technologies, who is dedicated to saving lives through advanced technology.